Friday and nuts. We'd all have a Merry Christmas. And uh, the situation for Dallas is really just fine because all they've got to do is drive down the field and kick a field goal. Now what you want to do is le use enough time so that Seattle does not I have think, a chance. I think to we don't that. worry about the time. We just get the points. Here's the kickoff by Brown. The Seahawks lead by one. 424 left. Short kick. Austin at the 10. Left at the 15. Outside at the 20. 25 toward the sideline. A stiff arm. Another good return for Austin, who had a 93-yarder for a touchdown earlier. At the 28-yard line, one way or another, Dallas has played better tonight than they have played in the last month. Can we agree on that? Agreed. Now, if we go back, the whole idea of going into this game was to forget the month of December. Let's take ourselves back to four, four weeks ago. No problem. You know, you believe it in your heart that Tony Romo is going to take this team down the field, and that's the way the offensive team needs to feel. Seattle not noted for its defense. They've held the Cowboys to 20 points tonight and 13 on offense. Romo in the shotgun on first down, and this crowd's insane. Snap is back, and he throws it right, and he's got a catch at the 34. Creighton circling away from defenders up for a first down to the 39. And the clock's inside four minutes, 11 yards to Creighton. Bullware with the tackle. Dallas is taking the time to get to the huddle. Taking your advice, Brad, of eating up the clock. Now, the X factor for the game, the guy that uh, you don't really count on that much but makes plays, is that Patrick Creighton person, just like he did on that last play. Pete Hunter is out there at left corner on Creighton. Three wides for Dallas. Romo on first down, handoff Jones, sliding into the middle of the 42. He got three yards. Stopped by Grant Wistrom. That's a curious call. Just maybe to, because the, the Seattle team had their defensive backs in the game and the advantage usually goes to the offense in that, like it did on that last series when Dallas moved it down. Second and seven. 3-17 in the game. Dallas trails by one in the wild card game. Seattle showing a blitz. Witten in motion. They're blitzing. Romo throws it to the right. Owens all alone catches it for a first down on the right sideline at the Seattle 46 and steps out of bounds. And we pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Dallas Cowboys radio network. Fulton City, Fort Worth, oh. We're Walton and Johnson. Back to the Dallas Cowboys in just a second. And we want you to be right here every morning on 93.3 The Bone. 3.02 to play in the wild card game. Seattle 21, Dallas 20. Well executed play on that last blitz. Glenn wide left, Owen slot left. Creighton wide right. First and 10, Dallas at the 46 of Seattle. Romo fakes the hitch, hands it to Jones up the middle 40. A safety to beat right at the 30. To the 20 yard line, stiff arm at the 15. Runs to the 11 yard line. Touched out of bounds, they say, at the 12. The clock running, actually they say he was tackled inbound, so the clock running at 245. 35-yard run for Julius Jones. It'll put him over 100. It'll put Dallas easily in range to take the lead, but now the problem is there's so much time left. 232 remaining in the game, and the ball is first and 10 at the Seattle 11. Seattle brings five guys from the left side, and we ran it to the right, and that's the reason why we gashed it. Boy, Dallas needs a touchdown. 2.18 in the game. I right. Handoff Jones starts at right guard, pushes to the center. Got about to the 11. As we get to the two-minute warning. How much better a football game could you have if you didn't have a rooting interest? Seattle leads 21-20. Thanks to the Cadillac Navigation event, confusion while driving no longer has to be a part of the human driving condition. Until now, getting turned around, relying on the kindness of strangers, or wrestling an accordion map on a sketchy roadside were fast. Okay, kids, here it is. Very simple in the playoffs. Seattle leads 21-20. Dallas is second and 10 at the 11. There are two minutes left in the game. Seattle has two timeouts remaining. So Dallas is certainly in field goal range. But how much time? Seattle will probably use some timeouts here. If Dallas were to try to just run the ball and let Gramatica kick a short field goal, Seattle would call their timeouts, and they'd have time with the ball back. So if you can score a touchdown, you want to do that, but you sure can't be chancy with the ball. 
because you got to at least kick the field goal. Second down 10 at the Seattle 11. In the I formation, Barber is the deep back. He'll get the handoff. Starts up the middle, dives right, slides left inside the 10. He comes down near the 7. And timeout Seattle with a minute 53 remaining. And so they're going to have one timeout left, Chrissy. Yeah, in regards to Martin Gramatica, two for two tonight, adds to his total. He holds the NFL postseason record for the highest field goal percentage any kicker, NFL history for his career. Coming into tonight's game, he was 11 of 12. Of course, those were games with Tampa Bay and uh, as an Indianapolis Colt. Actually, I believe he just kicked off for the Colts last year. But 91.7%, just barely above John Casey of the Panthers, who's second with 91.3. But going into this with the two field goals tonight, now 13 of 14 in his NFL career. And Bill Parcells knew of that statistic when they discussed signing Gramatica. He knew of his postseason success. That was a factor in bringing him to the Cowboys. Oh, that's a great note, Christy. Thank you. But, Charlie, right now it's third and seven. What are you going to do? We're going to run. He's going to run it, I think. I, but, you know, what do I know? But that's what I'd be thinking. That's what I'd like to see him do, run it. Third down and seven. And they are going to play fake, and Romo's going to throw to the end zone. Witten caught it near the one-yard line, and he's got a first and goal. Oh, there's a gutsy call for you. Woo. Wasn't it? That was I'll, a I'll great tell you call. right now, there's a shortage of brass down there on that sideline because they just used some. Wow. <laughs> and Romo executes the throw to Witten to the one-yard line for a first and goal, and Seattle has not yet used a timeout. Oh, heavens this is to the, Murgatroyd. This is the worst thing that could happen for Seattle, for Dallas to get it there without getting the touchdown, to get it on the one-yard line. So now Dallas is, what, run the ball two, three times, clock being down, done, over. Boy, he threw it. He threw a rocket shot. The ball was high. Witten went up and snagged it with authority and brought it down, and nobody was going to get that ball loose from Witten. What are they reviewing? The booth is reviewing something, Christy? Yes, the booth is reviewing the play. Seattle did not have to take a timeout there. The referee must have been buzzed from well, uh, the, the replay last, official it's the last upstairs. Minutes. Yes, so it There's would be no from challenging. the. So it must be. The it's from the, the booth, right? Yeah. But it came from upstairs. Yeah, but in the last two minutes, it would always come from upstairs. So they must be reviewing the spot. You know what? It's all camera angle, but that's pretty interesting because he might not have that first down as we look at a replay. We look at the replay. Witten goes up, makes the catch in traffic, and it's just forward progress where the line judge decided that he got to. And then it's camera angle because he had to get to the one to get the first down. Yeah, but we here we are discussing, and it's hard to see. And because it is hard to see, that kind of lends itself that they won't overrule it because it's not real clear. Just exactly like the Roy Williams uh, interception earlier. What a great point. Now, remember, this is uh, called for by the booth, but unlike college football, this even when it's called for by the booth, this is still the referee who is making this determination. So it's either first and goal for Dallas or fourth down and inches with a minute 19, and then you just have to kick the field goal, right? Absolutely. Have to. No, no questions no, or don't, hesitations. Don't, even, don't, don't be going there with any other thoughts other than kicking the field goal. Seattle still has a timeout remaining. And that, that's dangerous with a minute 19 left on the clock. My rule, uh, it takes a long time, and they're reversing it, and they didn't take very long, so let's see. After reviewing the play, the receiver's forward progress was stopped at the one and a half. It's fourth down. Oh. Oh. That's, I'll tell you, that is so hard to determine because you're relying completely on camera angle. And Witten, of course, was trying to get to the end zone. So now it's fourth down. And uh, it's just inches, but you just have to kick the field goal. They don't, this they don't. is the third and final timeout. Seattle, who's called time? Seattle. Seattle. But Dallas doesn't have the field goal team on the field. How no. do you not kick the field goal? That's a good question. Seattle has used their final timeout, but it, it's 21-20. It's a one-point game. If you don't make the first down, you lose the game and you're out of the playoffs. Am I missing something, Charlie? No, I don't think so, Brad. It's pretty cut and dried. 
we're going. Yeah, here comes the kicking. field goal team. Okay. We're kicking. They were just I'll tell you what, though, and I hope Dallas wins the game so that Parcells will be in a little better mood to be asked about what was the, even the conversation about. It looked to me, I'm just reading body language and uh, half-hearted attempt at lip reading, as though he was trying to find out how far he had to go. Well, he's just analyzing everything. I think he knew what he was going to do the whole time. He was just making sure he gave it a fair thought. Well, Gramatica will try to give Dallas the lead here. The ball will be spotted by Romo at the nine. So it's 19 yards on the right hash for the lead. And the snap is bad, and Romo picks it up and runs left to the five, and he's taken off his feet at the two-yard line. He fumbled the ball. The snap was bad, and the Cowboys did not kick the field goal, and their season's going to end. The snap was on the ground, and Gramatica could not get the field goal kicked. And Romo tried to run left, and for a moment it looked like he might make it, and then he was tackled short of the first down before he fumbled the ball. And on the most unlikely series of events, did Romo just juggle it? The snap was all right. We're looking at another replay. Romo simply juggled the snap and was tackled at the two-yard line, and the Cowboys won't even get an opportunity to kick the field goal. Oh, looking again, yeah, the snap was fine. Romo dropped the ball, putting the snap down. Yeah, the, the, he handled it properly when he caught it, but as he was moving it over to the and spot. And you were a holder for a long time. To put it down, yeah, and he just didn't. It slipped out of his hands. How strange. That, that, that is the most unbelievable thing I think I've ever seen. In a playoff game, down by one point with the ball at the one-yard line, and to, all you got to do is kick the field goal, and you're going to have the lead. Now, Seattle might have come down the field and scored anyway. But Tony Romo, the holder, dropped the ball. Gramatica never got a chance to make the kick, and Seattle will just... Now, they, they can't just take a knee. they got to be careful of the safety. they got to get forward progress a little here with a minute 14. They'll hand the ball off to Alexander. Oh comes through the 5, to the 15, to the 20. And a first down, and now the game will end. I have never seen a turn of events like that. I, By the way, Alexander is hurt. By the way, I don't think that the call that they made to deny Whitten the first down was necessarily the wrong call. But it was certainly edgy, because you're dependent on camera angle. And, and that's a very tricky thing down there. And, and you, the whole idea of the replay is to try to get it right, and, and I agree with you, Brad. They were just trying to get it right, and their view of it appeared to be one such that they had to re, uh, reverse it. This was a game the Cowboys... You can't say they had it won, because with a minute 19, Seattle had no timeouts, or the, a timeout, but they... Uh, a no timeouts, but they had a chance to come down the field. They might have come down the field and kicked a field goal. But to have it end like that, to have it end with the potential winning field goal with a minute 19 left to play, sitting right there, and to have the holder, who is the starting quarterback, simply drop the ball the first time it's ever happened. He's been a fine holder. He's been a great holder. And when he was moving to the outside, I bet he thought he had the, the, touch, uh, the touchdown. He looked open to him. He got caught from behind. You know, there's just such a strange things. I mean, you, you, you think Dallas, of this. this think of uh, Seattle's run the ball and Dallas called timeout. You, you think these kind of things happen in high school football games. This is, the, this is why the, the, the dollar... Entertainment dollar is so very good for high school football. You know, there's lots of stuff that happens. There's quality of play, too, but anything can happen at any time. And you think about what happened this year against Washington, Brad. I mean, how in the world do you describe that? You couldn't even make that scenario up. And to have things like that happen on field goals twice, had they won that game, you know, they might have won the East. That's and right. A lot of things would have happened differently. Th this is an unbelievably heartbreaking loss. I've never seen something like that, an ending to a game like that. The snap on the ground, 
and Dallas is going to lose their playoff game that they, they had pretty much won. But again, you go back, sure would have liked to have that touchdown when they settled for the field goal early in the fourth quarter. And then they fumbled the ball down here and gave away the safety, and that's really the difference in the game. As much as anything else, they hand it off to Alexander. Today, the Cowboys scored two touchdowns, making the Washington Mutual donation to Dallas Achieves $1,000. The supersonic player of the game is Bobby Carpenter. He'll receive a $250 MySonic gift card and have $250 donated in his name to Happy Hill Farms. Since our season will end uh, tonight, uh, barring something really unforeseen on third and 11 with 55 seconds left, uh, I want to thank uh, Charlie Waters and John Ingham, our producer, and our statistician, Bob Thomas, Christy Scales, for her great job as always, and our spotters, Scott Agolnik and Mickey Yabusi, and, of course, Mike Simpson and Gordo and Kevin Simpson and Lori and all of the Midcom crew for the great professional job that they do. This has been a, a very frustrating year, an exhilarating one for the Cowboys in many regards, and in many points, uh, one that pointed with great hope for the future. It ends with the most unbelievable disappointment in the most bizarre fashion I believe I've ever seen. It's the strangest that I've seen. It's a up and down the emotional roller coaster. Alexander's going to take the handoff on third down and run left and uh, be taken down at around the 28. 45 seconds left to run off the clock, and the Seahawks are at fourth down. Dallas could have somehow maybe pushed, kept him up and pushed him out of bounds. There's uh, 30 seconds left in the season here. And um, words seem somewhat inadequate. Dallas is going to have one play. Seahawks are going to have to punt the ball away. No one knows what the, uh, well, maybe some people do, but the future of uh, Bill Parcells. Here's a flag for delay of game. Cowboys ownership has said repeatedly they want the head coach back. Clearly he had his team ready to play a road playoff game tonight. They played pretty well. Yeah, they did. They and they did. have some defensive deficiencies that showed up again, but they played pretty well. Sure, they did. They were competitive, and they did a really good job of uh, you know, erasing all the negativity that would that had been surrounding them for the last, well, the last four weeks. And uh, the Seahawks will have to punt the ball away. Something crazy could happen, so we'll take close. Snaps on the ground, and Plackemeyer gets rid of it. Four seconds left as the ball kicks out of bounds. Dallas will have one play left with two seconds. And then just heave the ball down the field, hope to get an interference. How about that? How would you like that? Get a pass interference, kick a field goal, win anyway. Hey, it's happened against us. Why can't it happen for us? Happened against us, against the what? The, uh, well, it was Washington. They couldn't end the game with a, with a penalty when they got that personal foul penalty. Something good's got to happen right here. Does Dallas deserve it? I, well, yeah, I think we deserve it. What an up and down year, though. Boy, you just, Tony Romo showed so much promise, and it was so exciting, and everybody was in such great position. You know, Boise State ran the, 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 the hook and lateral. All right, so let's see what they do. Here. This is the last play, maybe, of the season. And Romo go back to throw and step up and run to his right and stop and go left and throw the ball into the end zone. He throws it into a crowd. It's tipped in the air. It's on the ground. The game is over, and so's the season. It was a game the Cowboys could win. The mistakes they made undid them. The safety when Terry Glenn fumbled coming out of the end zone. And the dropped hold on the field goal that could have put Dallas in front with a minute 19 to play. Things that you just don't expect to happen with the guy that handles the ball more than anybody else on the team to fumble uh, the snap on the field goal is just, just, just doesn't, doesn't make any sense at all. Nothing. 
And Dallas did a beautiful job on fourth down to stop them earlier in the fourth quarter, only to complete the quick pass out to Terry Glenn, and, and Terry get the ball poked out.